Paul Sam. It's Easter weekend and it's a chilly one. Andrew is tracking rain and low temps today, but what about Easter Sunday? Your full forecast is coming up. Taken by Eiserman. Touched by Cicerelli. Five to five. Wow, NHL playoffs 1996. Steve Eiserman stunned the hockey world with that overtime slap shot game winner. And now, 20th year, years later, number 19 has returned to the only city he's ever played for. The captain is back. We've got construction to get around for the weekend. Livernoy and Troy closed down at I 75. I'll help you get around it. Good morning, everyone. I'm consumer investigator Hank Winchester coming up new this morning. A look at the big recall scam and deal of the week. You may want to take advantage of this Easter weekend that is coming up new this morning. Plus, a security checkpoint at Metro Airport shut down when a bag catches fire. What was inside that caught TSA off guard? Plus, our Larry Sproul reporting live this morning. Hey there, Larry. Good morning, Priya. We are talking basketball this morning. That's because the Detroit Pistons will be making history tonight here at Little Caesars Arena. Local 4 News Today starts right now. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. Good morning at 6 o'clock. I'm Priya Mann. Good morning, Priya. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sean Lay. Thank you for joining us for Local 4 News Today. It is Easter weekend. All eyes on the skies. We are yeah. hopeful. So many activities uh, for folks this weekend. We're hoping it stays dry. Yeah, I know. And I was listening to that rain overnight. Andrew, is it going to stick around for much of the day today? Well, as you know, this is the best time to talk about, about weather. And Priya and Sean, you're exactly right. Rain will stick around for today, but Easter Sunday, it does get drier and believe it or not, milder. Let's focus on some of the wet and chilly weather we have now. As we talked about last night at 11 o'clock, temperature barely budged from last night. It's 40 degrees. That's about the same temperature it was just a few hours ago. A little bit of light rain in parts of Oakland County northward, but more rotating around and on the way coming in from the south and southeast across Lake Erie from Cleveland and into southeast Michigan later on this morning. So be prepared for wet conditions, not only this morning, but also this afternoon and still flood concerns along Lake Huron and also along Lake Erie from Monroe County, St. Clair and Santa Lac counties through the day today. Here's a look at your forecast. Temperatures hang around 40 degrees for this morning barely up to around 50 this afternoon. So grab your jackets and hats to stay warm. Sun rises at 645, but rain throughout much of the day drying up later on tonight. So more on that sunshine for Easter Sunday and those higher temperatures coming up. Andrew, thanks kindly. Road closures are underway on Livernoy Road in both directions under the I-75 freeway here in Troy. New video into the newsroom here. Crews are demolishing a bridge in this area. In just minutes, Kim DeGiulio is just going to tell us how we all can get around it. The captain has finally come home. Steve Eiserman officially named the new general manager of the Red Wings Friday afternoon. Steve Eiserman raises the chalice above his head. Eiserman, one of Detroit's most beloved athletes and one of hockey's most formidable players, led the Red Wings to three Stanley Cup championships. Now, all these years later, he's back to try to do it again. And new Red Wings GM Steve Eiserman is getting right to work. That's right, just 24 hours now after a shock went through the hockey world with the news that the captain is coming home. Fans are rejoicing, and Eiserman is talking about coming home. Thank you. I, re I really appreciate you all. Uh this was a long time coming. Steve Eiserman back with the Red Wings, this time as GM. On Friday, he joked. He thought he'd have to wait a whole lot longer. I thought Kenny is going to be the manager for X. Jim Nill is going to take over for Kenny. And, you know, I'm going to be 100 before I get to be the manager of the Red Wings. So This moment made possible because former GM Ken Holland decided to step aside. It's a real exciting day for me um, to see Steve Eiserman come back where he belongs. Uh, back in Detroit with the Detroit Red Wings. Harlan stays on as senior vice president. Eiserman says he will call on his friend and mentor often. But make no mistake, this is Steve's team now, and he believes the future is bright. I think we're off to a tremendous start as you watch the team this year with the likes of 
Dylan Larkin, Anthony Manta, uh, uh, Andreas Athanasiou, uh, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, Philip Aronic. You have the foundation for a core there. Wow, big news yesterday. And you can't really say that it's not, it's big. I mean, yeah. you can, I mean, you sh should say it's big, but it's really, really big mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> People are still buzzing about this 24 hours later. They're ready for Red Wings uh, season to begin, even yeah, though that's, that's right. next year. I know. Let's see what he can do. All right. Well, our coverage of Iserman's return home continues on ClickOnDetroit.com, where you can watch the entire news conference, and you can find it right on the homepage. All right. 6.05 on a Saturday. The Wings hockey season certainly a long <laughs> way away, but all eyes now on LCA today for an entirely different reason, something we haven't seen in a while here. Yeah, it's the playoff push for the Detroit Pistons. Larry Spruill reporting live from LCA with what you need to know this morning. Hey, Larry. Good morning, Sean and Priya, and the Pistons will try to go off the buzz created by Steve Eiserman by him coming here to Detroit. And as they host the first ever playoff game here at Little Caesars Arena, now the Pistons lost games one and two in Milwaukee by a combined 56 points. Game three is tonight here at LCA. Head coach Dwayne K Casey said his team has nothing to lose, and the Pistons' Reggie Jackson says there were things from game two that the Pistons can build on. Because game one was very disappointing. We felt like our effort. Game two, we felt a little bit better. Still didn't feel like we had our full 48, um, but it was a better performance by us, and uh, I think we at least made them feel us. So we're very optimistic and looking forward to game three tomorrow. It's not like we're out there afraid or whatever. We, we have nothing to lose. That should be our attitude going in to fight, scratch, and claw. And we did that, you know, it's sad to say, one quarter of, of the last game. So we got to develop that mentality for four quarters. And the goal is to win, of course. Now, if you want to come down, you can. If you don't have tickets, tickets are still available. You can buy them online or here at the door. Tip-off is tonight at 8 o'clock. We're live at LCA. Larry Sproul, Local 4 News Today. Look, so exciting. Pistons, they want to fill that place tonight mm -hmm. and really get loud and to right. get back in this series. Why right. not? Okay. All right. Larry, Thanks, Larry. Thank you. A lot more coming up on Local 4 News today. We're just getting started, but again, talking about Iserman, talking about those Pistons, but the weather, though, on Easter weekend. Yeah, that's right. Andrew, what's the rest of our weekend looking like? But it won't be like that all weekend long. We'll talk about these chilly and wet conditions as we go through this morning, but we're talking about sunshine as well before the Easter weekend is over. So we're looking at some good news. All that in your seven-day forecast in minutes. Plus, an out-of-control teen driver oh. crashes into a patrol car. What caused this crash caught on camera? Oh, what scary video there. And a man charged by the feds for threatening to kill Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and two Democratic presidential candidates still ahead. The Congresswoman is reacting. Yeah, May 23rd. Time now is 611 and a Redford teen will face a judge day in connection to an alleged assault involving a three year old boy. The 17 year old was arrested this week after a couple called police after witnessing the teen take the toddler underneath a bridge. The 17 year old is charged with accosting the child, which carries up to four years in prison if found guilty. The prosecutor's office says no allegations of sexual assault have been issued in this case. Also making news this morning, a Florida man accused of making three members threatening three members of Congress, including Rashida Tlaib, has been arrested by the feds. Congresswoman Tlaib was in town last night for an event, and the bump in security was quite noticeable. Mara McDonald is reporting this morning. There was extra security here, plain clothes and subtle, but still here nonetheless. Tlaib opened a Green New Deal event here at the Bonstel. The first term congresswoman has been one of the most outspoken members of the freshman class in Congress. She's made national headlines for being one of the first Muslims in Congress, but also making waves when this clip. Because we're going to go in there, we're going to impeach the On her first day in office went viral. Tlaib's office has had its share of nasty phone calls, but the feds say what a 49-year-old Florida man did cross the line, calling not only Tlaib, but two other Democrats, Congressman Eric Swalwell and Senator Cory Booker. Before Tlaib hit the stage tonight, she told us. I actually feel safer here with my people than anywhere. Uh, and uh, for so much uh, hate rhetoric and so much, um, you know, people assuming, assuming violence because of my faith or because of the issues I stand for, uh, it just makes me want to work harder. The voicemails to all three were filled with obscenities, religious and racial slurs, 
as well as death threats. I grew up around people that said, nope, no one buries you. No one makes you quieter or tries to um, make you feel less than. Uh, you speak louder, shout if you need to, but you fight back. And the way I fight back is I outwork the hate. That Florida man, 49-year-old John Kless, he has been arraigned on charges of making a threatening communication. We're in Midtown. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Well, you notice Mara wearing that hat and a thick coat. You Ooh. really needed it last night. And today, it seems like a chilly one as well. We were downtown, and people were hearty Tigers fans walking yeah. to the game in that spitting <laughs> oh, rain. No. And I thought, oh, man. <laughs> and more dedicated fans possibly there today. Yeah. So right. Grab a poncho, layer up underneath. That's a one o'clock start over at uh, over at Comerica Park, and then dedicated basketball fans outside of LCA experiencing some playoff basketball tonight, where it will still be chilly and still be a bit wet. You see raindrops on the camera lens. You're looking live at downtown Detroit. Weather window brought to you by 1-800 Hansons, our proud sponsor. Milwaukee in town, of course, with playoff basketball over at uh, LCA. Later on today, we'll see temperatures only in the 40s, so it remains a chilly day. We've got rain showers that will move across the area this morning, this afternoon, into this evening, then becoming mostly cloudy by game's end and chillier. Temps go from around 48 for tailgaters before the game starts. This game starts at 8 p.m. with the tip off. We're looking at temperatures down to 42 uh, by the end of the game. All right, out there right now, we're looking at some rain showers traversing across portions of southeast Michigan, mainly north of 8 Mile right now, uh, coming down at a pretty good pace in these areas of yellow. That's where we have more moderate showers or slightly heavier showers across portions of Sanilac County. Some light rain over in Lapeer County, stretching into Oakland County, parts of uh, Macomb County, and down here in Washtenaw County. We're looking at the more rain down to our south that is yet to rotate through. You can see that general circulation in the atmosphere. You can also see heavier rain showers farther to the south in portions of Ohio. Some of the heaviest rain remains there. Little chance of thunderstorms, but you always want to be careful on wet surfaces. And with the rain happening on a prolonged period of time, watch out for ponding on roadways eventually. And of course, that sheen out there that's out there on uh, area roads, and you don't want to hydroplane either. We're looking at 44 degrees by noon, only 48 for a high by 4 p.m. So all of us, whether we're going to sporting events or just going to services or other places, we still need to bundle up as we go throughout the day. It's 40 degrees right now, a wind of 20 miles per hour. Visibility so far looking pretty good. We're looking at 39 for our friends over in Port Huron, 38 in Holly. So we're staying away from the freezing mark, thank goodness. So we don't have to be worried about any ice out there on the roadways, mainly wet conditions, not icy conditions. And the wind, hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you want to bundle up too. Winds easily around 15 to 20 miles per hour and gusts around 25 miles per hour. So it remains like this throughout the rest of the day. And the wind, it'll have a component coming off the lakes, giving us a chance of lakeshore flooding. So lakeshore flood advisories up along Lake Huron and along Lake Erie. You can see later on by noontime, some heavier rain starts to move in. For the afternoon, it sticks around and basically sits right on top of much of southeast Michigan before dissipating and moving away just in time for Easter Sunday. Tomorrow, sunnier as we celebrate Easter and milder. Highs around 65. Getting warmer from there. 70 degrees on Monday in the 60s, even near 70 on Tuesday and staying mild all of next week. That's looking at weather forecast. Now over to four live traffic and camp. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great weekend. We've got some construction to get you around for the weekend. So let's start over on M5. The westbound lanes closed between Middle Belt to I-275. That closure will reopen on Monday morning at 5 a.m. So in the meantime, you can use Grand River or 8 Mile as an alternate route. Also, we've got construction on the westbound lanes of I-94. Between I-75 to Woodward, you'll see one lane block there. That will wrap up around 9 o'clock this evening. Eastbound lanes of I-696 between Mount and Gratiot, two lanes were blocked there last night at 9 p.m. This will remain that way until late May. We'll keep you updated on that. And then over in the Troy area, we've got construction for bridge work. The north and southbound lanes of Livernoy, right at I-75, that's closed. It will reopen Monday morning at 5 a.m. So to get around it, you can use Crooks or Rochester Road instead. Have a great weekend, everyone. Good to see Kim on a Saturday. Okay, still ahead. New Jersey police jump into action when three people are trapped inside burning vehicles. Wow, the intense moments all captured on police body cam. We'll show you more of that video next. 
Plus, a security checkpoint shut down at Metro Airport after a bag catches fire. What was inside the bag that caused a security scare? But first, some important consumer news. Hey, Hank. Coming up in my Help Me Hank Consumer Headlines, the deal, the scam, and the recall of the week. Important information you need to know about, and it's new this morning. But first, let's sound those trumpets, Sean. Let's celebrate you on an Easter weekend. What's the date? Four? Uh, April 20th. Yeah. Saturday. Nicholas Schwartz turning nine today. Nicholas, have a great day. Charlotte Martin is 11. Charlotte, happy birthday. Morgan Anderson turning 24. All right, Morgan, happy birthday. And Brandon Dumont is 27. Happy birthday, Brandon. And RJ Tyler is 36. All right, RJ. And we also want to wish a very happy birthday to Letitia Johnson, 41 today. Happy birthday, Letitia. Ben Novotink is 43. Michael Arnold is 44. Kimberly Noble is 50. Happy birthday, Kimberly. Welcome to Big 5-0. And Edna Carroll is 56. How about Lorraine Stewart David checking in at 59? Happy birthday, Lorraine. Jimmy Womble is 76. Mr. Womble, happy birthday. Doris Pinkston is 95. Miss Pinkston, happy birthday. And Zania Alake is celebrating today, along with Pat Droskel and Catherine Tucker. Happy birthday. And we also want to wish a very happy anniversary to Mike and Linda Buckley, 16 years of wedded bliss, and Mike and Laura Oldani, 32 years. Also want to wish a very happy anniversary to David and Luann Tibbetts, 40 years together. Happy birthday, happy anniversary to everyone celebrating. Stay warm out there. We'll be right back. Notre Dame in the heart of Paris, flames on the roof near the spire of the cathedral. The trial of a former state trooper found guilty in court this afternoon, involuntary manslaughter. Reaction to the release of the Mueller report has been swift. The return of Steve Eiserman to Detroit. I am thrilled to be back as the general manager. Hansons. Let's take a look at some of the consumer headlines making news this week. We're going to begin with the recall of the week. Check the kitchen cupboards because uh, Chewy Chips Ahoy cookies are being recalled because of an unexpected solidified ingredient inside. Check the packaging for the best when used by date of September 7th, 8th. 14th and the 15th. The scam of the week. This one is from the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, they are warning about a wave of Social Security scams and imposters. They are calling up people telling you that your Social Security number has been suspended because of suspicious activity. They may ask you for some personal information over the phone to verify. Just know this is a big scam targeting Metro Detroiters right now. The deal of the week. If you need some uh, last minute Easter shopping to do, Target is the place to go. They are holding big sales right now on kids clothing and shoes buy one get the other 50 percent off you can get all this information and also to take a look at the consumer headlines and all the info in our help me hank newsletter you heard it from hank you can sign up right at click on detroit.com and there you'll find all the big consumer headlines and stories that made news during the last week i'm consumer investigator hank winchester back to you all right, Hank, 624, a group of New Jersey police being honored after risking their lives to save four people from a burning car. The incident happened earlier this month on a highway. Yeah, check out this newly released body cam footage showing the brave officers pulling the victims out of the flaming car one by one. Oh my goodness, That's you can just intense. see those flames there. Two of the victims badly burned. However, without these brave officers, things would have been a lot worse. Certainly, they are lucky to be alive thanks to their thick, th uh, quick thinking. Yep, they jump in, jump yeah. right to action. Look at those flames. Mm. That is intense. All right. Thankfully, those officers are okay as well. Well, back here at home, let's turn our attention to a story out of Romulus. That's where a fire caused a scare and long wait times at Metro Airport Friday afternoon. Look at the middle of your screen. Oh, goodness. Look at the singed floor there. The airport says a bag with lithium batteries. It caught fire at the security checkpoint right there in line in what? the North Terminal. You know that place right there? Yeah, the North Terminal yeah. around three firefighters were there to put out the fire. What would happen if the bag got on the plane? I know. And yeah, those batteries so were in bad shape and burst into fire. Well, glad hmm. TSA is doing their job, but that's scary. 
Let's talk about Earth Day. It's right around the corner in the Michigan Science Center. What a great place is celebrating with free general admission sponsored by Denso. Yeah, today from 10 to 5 p.m. The museum will be open and free to the public. You can learn about Earth science with hands on activities, exhibits and shows. The event includes more than 250 exhibits that you won't want to miss. That looks like a lot of fun. I love Earth Day celebrations and I love the Michigan Science Center. Yeah, it's always so much fun. Still ahead out of control. The punishment a teen driver faces after nearly slamming into a patrol car here. A special event kicks off today, how you can visit some of the most beautiful places in the country for free. Meanwhile, this weekend is one of the most dangerous weekends of the year for our pets. Our Frank McGeorge will show you how you can reduce the risk and a message this morning from a measles victim who's worried the disease could spread even more this weekend. All that and much more coming up. Um. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Check this out, a visitor in Macomb Ooh. County. Why dog owners need to keep a close watch on their pets. And a new ruling in the aftermath of the Flint water crisis could bring the battle to Washington. And taking a look outside your window, it's looking calm now, but just in a few hours, it'll be wet and rainy. I was listening to that rain and wind all night last right? night. I just kind of got snuggled under the covers. And That's was like, nice. I hope it goes away. We want to do well. We got egg hunts. We I got know. services coming up. Everything. I know. We got to grab our winter coats before heading out there for the egg drops. Sounds That's about right. right. Yeah. Marshmallow drops. That yes. Is. Uh, we have temperatures right now, mostly in the uh, low 40s. Can you imagine their egg drops from? I know. <laughs> from a helicopter. That'd be a little messy. <laughs> Messier than what we're getting right now. Well, yes, we are looking at some of that light rain, not overtaking all of southeast Michigan. You have a couple of bands of light rain here, uh, strewn across portions of Oakland County and the northern Washtenaw County. Also here, farther to the north uh, of Detroit, along the I-69 corridor and into the Thumb. Now, all temperatures, even though it's on the chilly side, remaining above freezing, and that's the way it stays throughout the rest of the day. So we're dealing with wet conditions, not icy conditions. Heavier, more widespread rain through Ohio. This right here over Cleveland is going to rotate around and uh, basically whip across southeast Michigan as we go through this morning and into the middle part of the day especially. And temperatures remain in the upper 30s to about 40 degrees for now, only struggling to the middle and upper 40s later this afternoon, up to around 48 degrees. So we'll need our jackets and coats and those extra blankets as we go through the entire day. But I'll talk about some sunshine on the way for Easter Sunday and higher temperatures in your seven day forecast coming up. All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now for a four live traffic update. You're looking at little to no traffic volume across most of Metro Detroit this morning. Right now, MDOT says we are accident free. We'll continue to keep an eye on your roads all morning long. Making news at 632, a Harper Woods community kind of on edge this weekend after a woman is robbed, robbed at knife point inside her own home. Yeah, it happened Friday afternoon on Old Homestead Drive near Kelly Road. Police say a man broke inside the woman's home and then demanded money. He got away on foot but was later arrested. The woman who's lived at the home for more than 40 years was not hurt but very shaken. This morning, we hear from a rabbi here in Metro Detroit who was among the 41 people to get measles this year here in Michigan. Now, he only received one of two shots and is now urging everyone to get fully vaccinated. Communities must come together to ensure our safety. Now, the rabbi's message comes as Passover gatherings started Friday and will continue tonight. Health officials are bracing for a rise in cases as families travel and gather to commemorate the Jewish exodus from Egypt. A judge has ruled that the people of Flint can now sue the federal government over its response to the city's drinking water crisis. Complaints over the water began shortly after the city switched its water source in April of 2014. Now, many lawsuits were filed stating that Michigan and Flint officials were responsible for the crisis and misled residents to believe that there was nothing wrong with the water. The lawsuit against the government claimed that the EPA was too slow to intervene after the water supply was contaminated. Dog owners in Shelby Township and around Shelby Township, you need to be on the lookout. A guest is roaming around that neighborhood. Yeah, this is kind of scary. Take a look. Just minutes after letting her 10-month-old puppy in, Allison Gombos heard a loud thud at her door, and she found a hungry coyote staring back at her nose pressed against the glass, possibly looking for an early morning snack. We thought it was a bird or a goose or something hitting that doorwell. And he looked and he goes, no, that's a coyote. 
and we could not believe what we were seeing. We had our puppy out there just 10 minutes before and I couldn't imagine if something were to happen to him. Oh, that's just so frightening. Allison alerted neighbors in her dog friendly neighborhood to keep an eye on their furry pets. Animal officials have also been made aware of the coyote, but a close call there. Wow. The battle continues in Michigan to protect the Great Lakes from an invasive species. Officials in the area are working to defeat sea lampreys. That's the worm like creature that sucks the life right out of fish. As adults, a single lamprey can destroy up to 40 pounds of fish in its lifetime. Wildlife crews use chemicals to kill over 2,000 of these parasites Friday. Treatments like these are done every three to five years to protect animals in our waterways. Time now is 634 and it's been an eyesore for more than a decade. But this morning we're learning of plans to breathe new life into the Old Shores Theater in St. Clair Shores. Jermont Terry joins us with the new development plan for this longtime favorite. The doors to the Shores Theater locked in 2006, but give us some time. People will soon walk back through these doors thanks to one hometown guys vision. Royal Ryan Ford used to say good. Get on the right track to nine mile a Mac. The old Shores Theater is now on track to come back. Yeah, a lot of memories here. After sitting idle for more than a decade, David Harton plans to revive oh, his childhood nice. memories and bring new ones for everyone in town. I've always been able to look at something and see a final product. While you may see a rundown movie theater with dusty seats and a busted screen, David envisions a vibrant future while embracing the past. I think, I think we can make this work. He projects to spend around a half million dollars in renovations. The plans entails taking the two theaters and dividing one side as a restaurant and the other side as an entertainment venue. It'll be for live music acts, um, possibly comedy during the week. Sure, there's a lot of work to get done, but David's convinced this old spot will transform into the happening place it used to be and then some, and it will keep his hometown thriving. It's bringing back something that's been closed for 13 years, bringing it back to life. And again, I grew up here. I see the vision. I know where we can go and what we can do with it. Now, David's hoping that the old signature marquee will remain the same, but that's still to be determined. But we do know it will take about 18 months to two years to get all of this work complete. And when it's all said and done, Nine Mile and Mac will definitely look different. Reporting in St. Clair Shores, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Looking forward to that. All right, thanks, Jermont. Well, happening today with Earth Day just around the corner, Monroe County is looking for some volunteers. Now, they need, need your help spring cleaning. River Raisin National Battlefield Park today from 11 a.m. until 3. Now, families, friends, organizations are all welcome to help with the fallen tree debris, trash pickup, mulching, and so much more. We've both covered events like that over the years. It's great to see all the volunteers come out. You know, you don't have to organize a whole team. Just, yeah. you know, you and your kids or something, grab some gloves and a bag and just go. Yeah, that's right. We all thank you. Speaking of national parks, this week is National Park Week. National parks all across the country are offering free admission today. And all week long, you can enjoy special programs and themed events in more than 4,000 parks throughout our beautiful country. And back here at home, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is bringing the fight against breast cancer to Detroit. Today, they're offering free breast cancer screenings for uninsured women. If you're interested, look for the mobile breast cancer awareness coach outside the Kobo Center. Screening starts at 9 a.m. That's another great cause. Sure is. All right, we've got a lot more coming up on Local 4 News today. We need to check with Andrew on the forecast on the timing of all of this. That's right. Well, occurring right now, chilly conditions out there. So bundle up for this morning. Temperatures starting in the 30s, only around 40 degrees, and it remains chilly throughout the day. Some rain showers out there as well. But will we see sunshine for our Sunday? The answer coming up, and your seven-day forecast as well in minutes. Plus, a secret ingredient turning heads. Which fast food joint is serving up cannabis with their burgers? Four people who are colorblind tested out these glasses today in Ann Arbor. It's like there's, there's more colors. We'll tell you more about the glasses and the experience the participants had. All right, take a look. There's nothing wrong with your TV, but just imagine for a moment what life would be like without the ability to just see color. Yeah, and about 300 million people suffer from some degree of color blindness, but now there's hope. A pair of glasses that can turn this 
into this. Yesterday in Ann Arbor, four people got to see and experience color for the very first time. Our Coco McAvoy was there for those special moments. The people we spoke to today had a hard time differentiating certain colors and said some colors that would be bright would seem dull. So they tried on these glasses today, hoping that would change. First time here? Yes. Oh, okay. Welcome. John Cobus helps run Le Bon Macaron Cafe in Ann Arbor. Uh, the, nougat, the nougat is similar to chocolate. It's filled with bright and colorful macaroons. And we do the coffee and French sodas and lattes. And um, so it's a nice business to be in. But Cobus always struggled to differentiate colors. I've often thought my mother never taught me the different colors. It turns out Cobus is actually colorblind and he's not alone. Today, he and a group of people tested out a pair of in chroma glasses in his shop, hoping to see colors vividly for the first time. I hope it really works. I hope it, it's, it's like, you know, kind of taking the blanket off. When it was time to try on the glasses. One, two, three. Very few words uttered as they took in new shades and hues. Wow. <laughs> Seeing colors pop on book pages. The reds are really vibrant and um, as well as the green. Cobus can now see the true beauty of his macaroons. Well, the, the biggest thing is seeing the passion fruit here and then looking down here at the lighter colors. It's a new experience for the group to finally see the full color spectrum. It's like there's, there's more colors. I'm Coco McAvoy, <laughs> Local 4. What an incredible moment for them to share with us. How cool is that? Yeah. Could you imagine, though, after all that time in a bakery, owning your own shop, now you can really see those vibrant colors? Yeah, the macaroon guy said, I didn't think my mom even taught me. I know. And then now he knows. He can see it all so vibrantly. Very it's got to cool. be wonderful for students as well. The yeah. technology and being able to view things like that, whether they're man-made, made from your own hands, or just enjoying nature as well. You Very could tell cool. what a huge impact when they were all just quiet. Yeah, we're all just taking, taking it all in. Yeah, that's that's right. right. Well, you saw the black and white image you started your story mm -hmm. off with. Yes, we're seeing a lot of gray out there in yeah. the skies as the sun rises this morning, but we'll see more blue skies for our Easter Sunday. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Here are the colors showing up here on 4 Live Radar. You got lots of green and yellow. That indicates light to moderate rain. Some of this rain slowly dwindling and fading away, but it's still out there. and It's leaving wet conditions in its wake. We're looking at uh, some light showers up towards Sandusky, across Lapeer, portions of Oakland, County, including Waterford, Pontiac, over into the Clarkston area as well. A bit wet in portions of Livingston County, including right around Pinckney. So be careful out there on those wet roads for this morning. A lot wetter if on this holiday weekend you're traveling down I-75 down toward the south, whether it's toward Columbus or a little bit farther to the west over in Lima or farther down south in the portions of uh, Cincinnati and into Kentucky. We have this area of low pressure that continues to spin away and it's just simply not moving. And the system is large enough to bring showers, even thunderstorms, in the D.C. area, also New York. So make sure those flights, whether they're leaving or coming from Metro Airport, are still on time, especially if they originate or if they're going to the East Coast, basically from Boston down to D.C. We're looking at 48 degrees for a highlight by this afternoon and still remaining wet. In fact, more widespread showers that will move in here closer to noontime and before 4 p.m. That may be the wettest portion of the day midday and early afternoon. We're looking at 40 degrees right now, a wind of 20 miles per hour, making it feel like it's closer to around freezing. And rain may affect today's baseball game. Still scheduled to go on time with the first pitch just after one o'clock, but be prepared for showers that will be around for tailgaters, also during the start of the game and even toward the end of the game. So grab a poncho, layer up underneath so you can stay dry and comfortable. Same thing for the kids too and those diehard baseball fans. It's 36 degrees, chillier for our friends over in Oxford. Ann Arbor, good morning. You'll need an extra blanket to stay warm as you're waking up. 39 right now. Adrian, you've got 40 degrees at this hour. Winds continue to stream in from the north and continue to push a lot of water along onto the lake shore. We're looking at wind chills because of that wind. Look how cold it feels if your skin is not protected. This is why we still need our winter coats, ladies and gentlemen. It feels like 27 over in Pontiac. Make sure the kids have their coats too in Ann Arbor. It feels like 29 degrees. And again, Lakeshore flood advisory up for Sanilac, St. Clair County, also for Monroe County throughout much of the day today because of that water being pushed on shore. But this area of low pressure continues to hang around. Water, or excuse me, moisture continues to rotate all around it, giving us that chance of showers. You can see that yellow here right across Motown in southeast Michigan. 
through the midday hours and into the late afternoon. Same thing up and down the east coast. So rainy for today, but high pressure moves in for tomorrow. That means sunshine for Easter Sunday as you head to and from services. Sunrise before 645 on your Sunday morning for sunrise services. 65 for a high. We love that mild weather, right? Well, it gets warmer on Monday, a high of 71. Still near 70 on Tuesday and overall mild and sunnier midweek next week. Back to you. All right, thank you, Andrew. Well, Highway Patrol officials in Oklahoma releasing dash cam video of a dangerous accident as a reminder to drivers to be cautious on wet roads. Let's see this again. There goes that car spinning oh. out of control. What kind of car is that? Huh? The trooper shows a uh, the video shows a trooper nearly being sideswiped by that hydroplaning car. It spins out of control under the under overpass there. The driver was not injured. Instead of a ticket, the trooper decided to give the teen driver just a warning to slow down. Wow, he got off lucky. Didn't he? Yeah. Wow. All right, still ahead, Florida school is going viral this morning for all the wrong reasons. It's not a good thing when you misspell school. It's not a good look at all. Wow. <laughs> You're lying right now. Your eyes are deceiving you. The school crosswalk sign. <laughs> Clearly. So whole. Yeah. <laughs> Who is responsible for this Ooh. viral slip up? Of course it's Florida. Today. He was the first to fall in the massive federal investigation into Detroit's demolition program. I accepted the money and, and I, I shouldn't have. Admitting his mistakes, coming clean, even taking a polygraph test. Very nerve wracking. Uh, a rough experience, but again, it's another way of me trying to get my truth out. Speaking publicly for the first time about the kickback scheme because of the way the city responded to his conviction. I was outraged. That's the reason why I'm here, not to try to vindicate myself in any way. I know what I did was wrong. A Defenders exclusive tomorrow night at 11. All right, and now for some stories making a buzz on social media this morning. Today, Carl's Jr. is cooking up a new burger with a special sauce made from cannabis oil. Okay. Yeah, the cheeseburger will only be sold for one day at one location in Denver, Colorado. Okay, that makes sense. Well, this particular burger will only be available today. Carl's Jr. is testing whether it should become a permanent menu item. All right, this is the first time a major fast food chain has featured a cannabis-infused item. I guess it makes sense that they're... It's infused with CBD. I'm seeing that in the news all yeah. week. I, I don't know it, anything about it. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's see how it, it does. Maybe if it does really well in Denver, they might roll it out elsewhere. <laughs> Who knows? Probably. Okay, now, a spelling mishap in Florida quickly goes viral, leaving folks there <laughs> scrambling to correct this elementary mistake. Uh, it looks like the road workers responsible for this school crosswalk are going to have to try again since they, you know, clearly misspelled it. It's really not a good look, but it's just ironic enough to go viral and it got people stopping to snap some selfies. Hopefully they Betty pulled it up on Twitter and saw that <laughs> someone had misspelled school and uh, we had to come see it for ourselves. That's hilarious. Once the city saw the viral post, they quickly sent out a crew to fix it. Uh, they spelt it right this time. Wow, I wouldn't want to be that person. Look at that big spell check he's got there. Yeah, I know, exactly. Now, wait a minute. I think it's genius because you would slow down. It would capture like, your attention. Yeah. So it would be safer, all right? I'm trying yeah. to put a silver lining on it. I just hope all those people who are taking selfies actually have right of way, like they can cross at the time of it. All right. I like how you're <laughs> pedestrian friendly. Well, well, it's better than Skahole. <laughs> You've been watching Jeopardy lately? This guy is on fire. He's won 11 days straight. And he's breaking Jeopardy records every night. His name is James Holzhauer. He's on a tear. Yeah, he's won over $850,000 by betting big on daily doubles and final Jeopardy. Now, his strategy comes from his day job as a professional gambler in Las Vegas. And each night, he gives a shout-out to someone. Alex Trebek says he's just going to run out of people to say hi to. You can watch Jeopardy Mondays through Fridays on Local 4 at 7.30. Well, look at that. See? Well, they're I mean, talking about this guy on the radio and said he has a photographic memory. So that makes sense about the gambling yeah. and the Jeopardy. He's good at it. Yeah, that's right. It's nice that he can take his skills and now earn some serious coin. Very cool. Hey, let's get a quick check on the weather right now. If you're just joining us, we're starting with a calm but cold start to our Saturday. Throughout the day, 
We're all going to expect some rain to roll through. And looking ahead to Easter Sunday, we should get a slight warm up. Andrew will be back in just a few minutes with a more complete look at your Saturday weather forecast and the rest of the weekend as well. Well, still ahead on Local 4 News today, what's really in your food? A new study shedding an alarming light on so-called gluten-free foods. Uh -oh. Shocking percent of restaurants that are really trying to pull a fast one when it comes to gluten-free. Hmm. Plus, it's the most dangerous weekend of the year for your pets. Dr. Frank McGeorge will be here to tell you how to keep your furry friends safe and sound. The cat looked like it was ready for a cat nap. It's a good day for that. Mm -hmm. Gray. We've got rain rolling through 655. Easter weekend, we're hoping those showers stay away for those marshmallow drops this morning. We'll be right back. You're taking a look at 4 Live Radar. We're off to a rainy start, and this could dampen your Easter weekend plans. Andrew's forecast just moments away. Let's go out live to Little Caesars Arena. We're inside now. The Pistons need your help tonight in the team's first ever playoff game at LCA. That's exciting. We'll go live. And the city's still buzzing over the big announcement that the captain has come home. But this time, he's running the show. Kim. We've got construction to get around for the weekend. Livernoy and Troy closed down at I-75. I'll help you get around it. This weekend is one of the most dangerous weekends of the year for our pets. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll show you the biggest spring threats to your pet and how you can help reduce the risk. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. Thanks for staying with us. It's 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Good morning, Priya. Good morning, everyone. Check out the radar behind us. Mm. All that rain churning up from Ohio headed our way, at least for Easter Saturday. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's going to be a lot of outdoor events, Andrew. Uh, Easter egg hunts, marshmallow drops. How should we be dressed? Well, it looks like for today, rain gear certainly required today. Or indoor activities. Hey, that's always great, right? Where it's drier and where it's warmer. The rain that we had earlier, it's dissipated quite a bit, but more is on the way. You can see a bit of it coming off of Lake Erie into portions of Monroe County within the next 30 minutes. More is going to form here as this area of low pressure continues to spin throwing a lot of moisture in our direction, generally from the east and southeast across Cleveland, across Lake Erie, and right here in southeast Michigan. And a lot of it sets up during the heart of your Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. and through the early afternoon at least. And a healthy amount of rain is going to fall, easily a half inch to an inch of moisture across much of southeast Michigan, from Sandusky all the way down to the Ohio border. And because of winds that come off the lakes, there's a lakeshore flood advisory up for those areas right along Lake Huron, St. Clair, Santa Lac County, and also here along Lake Erie, especially in Monroe County. Make sure those sump pumps are working today and make sure you stay uh, safe as you're driving out there on wet roads. Now, the heaviest rain may fall as we get closer to the noon hour and just before 4 p.m. Notice, remaining chillier today as well with temperatures in the 40s. But milder, sunnier weather for Easter Sunday. More on that in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now for a four live traffic update. Right now, Livernoy Road under the I-75 freeway in Troy is closed in both directions. Now that's for crews to tear down another bridge. In the meantime, drivers are urged to use Big Beaver, Crooks, or Maple Road as detours. Livernoy Road is expected back open by 5 a.m. Monday morning. Boy. You can really feel the excitement in the air throughout the city. That's right. Steve Eiserman is back. The captain is coming home. Fans beaming this morning. The Red Wings new general manager is ready to return uh, the team to glory. He knows better than anyone that it's going to take a bit of time and a lot of work. Thank you. I, re I really appreciate you all. Uh this was a long time coming. Steve Eiserman back with the Red Wings this time as GM. On Friday, he joked he thought he'd have to wait a whole lot longer. I thought Kenny is going to be the manager for X. Jim Nill's going to take over for Kenny. And, you know, I'm going to be 100 before I get to be the manager of the Red Wings. So This moment made possible because former GM Ken Holland decided to step aside. It's a real exciting day for me um, to see Steve Eiserman come back where he belongs uh, back in Detroit with the Detroit Red Wings. Harlan stays on as senior vice president. Eiserman says he will call on his friend and mentor often. But make no mistake, this is Steve's team now, and he believes the future is bright. 
I think you're off to a tremendous start as you watch the team this year with the likes of Dylan Larkin, Anthony Mantha, uh, uh, Andreas Athanasiou, uh, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, Philip Aronic. You have the foundation for a core there. And our coverage of Iserman's return home continues on ClickOnDetroit.com where you can watch the entire news conference and you can find it right there on the home page. Wow, everybody was really buzzing yesterday. All right, also today is a big day for our Detroit Pistons. Yeah, tonight the Pistons host the Bucks in the first playoff game at Little Caesars Arena. Larry Sproul joins us live inside. Larry, Pistons are calling on fans to make it a packed house. Indeed. Good morning, Sean and Priya, and they are expecting a packed house for history tonight. This will be the first playoff game inside the Little Caesars Arena. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights from the past two games. Now the Pistons lost games one and two in Milwaukee by a combined 56 points. Game three is tonight here at LCA. Head coach Dwayne Casey said his team has nothing, and I repeat, nothing to lose. And the Pistons, Reggie Jackson says they were things from game two that the Pistons can now build on. Because game one was very disappointing. We felt like our effort. Game two, we felt a little bit better. Still didn't feel like we had a 448, um, but it was a better performance by us, and uh, I think we at least made them feel us. So we're very optimistic and looking forward to game three tomorrow. It's not like we're out there afraid or whatever. We, we have nothing to lose. That should be our attitude going in to fight, scratch, and claw. And we did that, you know, it's sad to say, one quarter of, of the last game. So we got to develop that mentality for four quarters. And you can feel the energy here on the court tonight. The Pistons game starts at 8 o'clock, and you can still get your tickets here online or here at the arena as well. I got to tell you guys, I feel it. I feel it. I feel a victory coming. We're live at LCA this morning. Larry Sproul, Local 4 News, bah, today. I could have got that. Yeah, I can't just, believe you have the whole arena to yourself, Larry. That's a, you're gonna find a ball somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They gotta have one lying Start around. Start looking under seats, under tables. There's gonna be a ball in there somewhere. Well, you look good. Thanks, Shoot Larry. Shoot some baskets. I know, it, it, got, it gotta be one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, in just a few hours, a Redford team will face a judge in connection to an alleged assault involving a three-year-old boy. The 17-year-old was arrested earlier this week after a couple called police saying they witnessed the teen take the toddler underneath a bridge. The 17-year-old is charged with accosting the child, which carries up to four years in prison if found guilty. The prosecutor's office says no allegations of sexual assault have been issued in this case. Listen up. It's a second chance and a clean slate. Later this morning, there's going to be another expungement fair in the city. These are big. This is time for Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County people to clear their criminal records. If you have no more than two misdemeanors and one felony on your record, you could be eligible here at this expungement fair. Capital offenses, criminal sexual conduct offenses cannot be expunged. Keep that in mind. This event is from 9 to 1 this afternoon at Oak Grove AME Church on Cherry Lawn at Pembroke in Detroit. Well, a warning for pet owners this morning. Veterinarians say Easter weekend is one of the most dangerous weekends of the year for our pets. That's that makes right. Sense. And Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to show us what sends so many cats and dogs to the vet this time of year. Unfortunately, some of our favorite Easter traditions can be downright dangerous for our pets. We've talked to a local veterinarian about the risks that pet owners need to watch out for, especially around Easter and in the springtime. A tisket, a tasket. Keep your pet away from that basket. Easter in particular, I think the biggest issue is chocolate and dogs. Veterinarian Dr. Michael Petty at the Arbor Point Veterinary Hospital in Canton says it's not only the candy that's a risk, but also the wrappers. Those can cause a GI obstruction if swallowed. Sugar-free gum or sweets are also a danger because they often contain a sweetener called xylitol. It can be fatal for dogs. Plastic grass poses a big risk for cats. Petty says use the paper variety instead or better yet, skip it altogether. Another serious no-no for dogs and cats, the Easter ham. Even if the ham part itself isn't high in fat, it usually has the fatty rind and what do they eat first? They want to eat all that fat. So we do see some animals come in with pancreatitis, which is an inflammatory condition of the pancreas and it can be life-threatening. Easter lilies may be pretty, but if you have a cat, avoid bringing them into your home. Every part of the plant, including the pollen, is poisonous for cats. Easter lilies are toxic and whenever you bring a strange plant into the house, you should look it up on a reliable botanical website and make sure it's not toxic to your pet. Petty says it's also important to make sure your lawn care products aren't putting your pet in danger. People are willing to go out there and put fertilizer in their lawn, 
herbicides on their lawn and you really have to be careful. There are some herbicides that have been linked to bladder cancer in dogs and you know just you know follow the directions about withdrawal times before you let dogs or kids go out on your lawn. Now even plastic eggs can pose a threat. Several dogs have suffered intestinal problems and required surgery after swallowing one. If your pet does get into any of those items, you need to call an emergency vet line right away for advice. Back to you. Yeah, that's right. It makes a lot of sense. All that chocolate, all that meat. We hear that warning every Easter. You kind of forget about it. It's really good advice. Yeah, that's right. Careful with your pets. Let's talk about that Easter weekend, and we see that rain churning up on the radar, Andrew. That's right. Much of it to our south, to our east, but now affecting us as well with some wet conditions for this morning into the afternoon for our Saturday. But it does dry up for Easter Sunday, but does it get warmer? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the week's forecast in minutes. And it's never too early to teach your kids the value of a buck. Still ahead, our friends from Money Smart Week will join us to tell us all about some awesome family events. And one involves a magician, because of course. 708, if you're watching right now, boy, are you lucky. Check it out. We have a question for you, a trivia question. How old mm. was Steve Eiserman when he was named captain of the Red Wings and became the captain? Head over to our fa Facebook page with your answer. Now, the first person this morning to get it right, don't Google it. I know you know the answer. You're going to receive a $100 value Easter basket. Wow. I've seen it. The basket's spectacular. It's courtesy of the Royal Tea Room over in Roseville. Oh, Andrew, you're the man of the weekend today with so many events happening, so many family gatherings, so many services that people will be going to. People visiting from out of town. Yeah. We got baseball practice, but boy, oh boy, it's right in the heart of when the rain is scheduled. We have pro uh, baseball also uh, here in downtown mm -hmm. Detroit. And now the rain is really going to make it tough for practice and possibly for the game later this afternoon. We'll announce on ClickOnDetroit.com how early that game morning, might be Early morning, marshmallow drops it could get lucky. If it's super early, yes. Yeah. Like anywhere between now and maybe 9 right. a.m. But right. as you get closer to 10 in the morning and afterward some more rain starts to flow in here. Here's a look at your forecast for later this evening. Our Larry Spruill over at uh, LCA indoors. That's the place to be, right? Well, the playoff uh, basketball game first one over at Little Caesars Arena. You can be a part of history outside the arena while you're tailgating. Grab your favorite Pistons coat and hat to stay warm. Temperatures only in the middle and upper 40s. Even at 5 p.m., temperatures way below average by a good 10, 15 degrees and getting chillier from there. And rain showers outside of LCA, so factor on extra time driving to and from the arena. You can see it's drying up a little bit here in southeast Michigan, but more rain continuing to stream in from the east, affecting areas like Monroe in just about 15 minutes down to Luna Pier, and more of this moisture is on the way. We have an area of low pressure far to our south, but this storm is large enough where it's creating rainier conditions, and we're not alone. Northern Ohio into Cleveland, parts of northern Indiana, all this rain is rotating around that area of low pressure uh, in a uh, counterclockwise fashion, and it'll move over us and set up camp right here over the Detroit area. In fact, we've got shower and thunderstorm activity also for our friends and neighbors over to the east. So plan on wet conditions, especially later this morning, into the midday hours, a persistent light to moderate rain will continue to fall from lunchtime all the way through at least the early afternoon. And clouds overhead, that northerly flow out of the, with our winds, keeping it chilly. Highs today only around 48 degrees. Getting brighter out there though, even with cloudy skies, wind of four, uh, excuse me, temperature of 40 degrees, the wind at 17 miles per hour, Visibility so far is looking pretty good, but with wind and water issues, make sure you check on flights coming and going over at Metro Airport, making sure that they're still on time. So in your weather story, three words for today, rainy, chilly, breezy. You can say it, rainy, chilly, breezy. But for tomorrow, Easter Sunday, sunny, milder. That sounds a lot better. And it feels like spring much of next week with those temperatures rebounding. So don't worry, it will get warmer and it will look prettier outside. We're looking at 37 right now in Macomb Township, 39 degrees for our friends over in Ann Arbor, 41 chilly degrees in Monroe. Temperatures only rise a few more degrees from here. That wind pretty strong too, 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting to around 25 miles per hour. It feels like it's below freezing. And again, we have those flood concerns near Lake Huron and near Lake Erie virtually all day today. So 48 for a high today, 40 degrees overnight staying above freezing. 
For your Easter Sunday, though, looking good, feeling good. Sunnier skies, highs back in the 60s, 65 degrees. 71 on Monday with partly sunny skies, maybe a shower or two in the afternoon. 69 degrees on Tuesday and overall next week, mild with highs in the 60s through Friday. Back over to you. Well, Money Smart Week is going strong. And back to tell us about two awesome family-friendly events is our friend Kelly Masters. Thanks for being with us, My Kelly. My pleasure. Thanks for having me again. So there's always so much to learn, but you've got a few tricks up your sleeve as yeah. well. Oh, very good, <laughs> yes. So our Money Smart Kids Magic Show has visited almost 30 elementary schools across Metro Detroit. Oh, wow. And we have to celebrate Money Smart Week at the end of the month. We will be um, having a celebration next mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Andrew's going to work on the weather for us. Um, <laughs> And uh, everyone is welcome to join us at Boys and Girls Club, where not only will they have an afternoon filled with fun um, activities, yeah. but the Money Smart Kids Magic Show and compliments of Ally Financial. Oh, I love um, that. A copy of their Planet Z and the Money Tree book. So for every family who attends, they get an afternoon filled with the Magic Show and other right. things, as well as a copy of this book to take home and keep. So it's nice to see a physical book because we're usually yes. on our gadgets. <laughs> And this is something that you can actually make with your family, and it's also very uh, Earth friendly. Absolutely. Well, we are going into Earth Day, yeah, right? Yeah. And it is Money Smart Month. So, um, in partnership with Northville Public Schools, the Northville Educational Foundation mm -hmm. um, puts on a STEAM fair okay. for uh, open to the public, open to the community, where families can come and we're going to test your skills. Oh, no. I don't know. Okay, so the point <laughs> so is you don't want the marble to, to fall, fall through the any... holes. These are just yeah. a couple of examples okay. of original inventions that will be on site. Now you have to avoid the holes. You can do it. Ah, good job. Okay. Okay, now what are you going to do? Oh, you're no. You're going to go around, problem Where? solve. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. But families can come and enjoy over 50 original exhibits. Uh-huh. Kind of a throw. Uh-oh, you lost <laughs> so that close. one. Why don't you try the frog pond? This, this one, one seems even harder. It is. <laughs> but Community Financial Credit Union is one of our great sponsors, and their team actually created this one as a team building activity. Look, this is a really and hard <laughs> angle, okay? Don't judge. Don't and the, judge. the goal of this one is to get the frogs into the pond. Um, that was close so enough. close. That was, that was very good. good. Only my third it's like try. horseshoes, right? Yeah. Close enough to win. <laughs> so um, next Wednesday, and all of this is available at MoneySmartWeek.org. Okay. So you can That's enjoy. Our STEAM Fair, again, mm -hmm. compliments of so many inventors of Northville Public School students. Families are welcome to come. And it is a way to come out, spend time with your family right. without spending any money. And right? It, and that's money smart. Absolutely. And when you're playing, oh, 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 oh. Woo, she did it. <laughs> I have some skill. There we go, Kelly. Uh, well, that's fabulous. And I love that you're also teaching financial literacy while you're having fun. Right. It's always isn't the that, best way. Isn't that the point? Yeah. I mean, really, life is stressful enough. It and is. So, this yes, we have, we have a lot of events for adults as well. MoneySmartWeek.org. You can find everything you need to know. Um, but it's okay to have a little fun while you're learning important Absolutely. life lessons. Absolutely. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. We've got the information up on your screen right there. We're going to put all of this info on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> Looks like fun. It was once called really kind of a fad diet and really looks here to stay. But are all food labels claiming this gluten free? Is it telling you the truth? Coming up, why well, you really need to take a close look at all of those ingredients. Change Livonia. 722 on a Saturday. Is foods label, our foods label gluten free, really gluten free? A new study using Portable gluten testers found that 32% of restaurant food that claims to be gluten-free isn't actually gluten-free at all. The worst offenders here, you can guess, pizza and pasta with gluten found in 52.2% of pizza and 50.8% of pasta samples. That's a lot. It's believed to be caused, the cause of this issue is likely due to cross-contamination. Time now is 722, and new studies show your cat does understand you when you call out their name, but just <laughs> most of the time they don't care. Researchers tested out four sound experiments and found that cats tend to perk up when they hear their owner's voice. Also, house cats showed some sort of response when they heard their name from a list of jumbled words. I, I always figured they knew, and they were just too busy. There's a study commissioned about cats that they can ignore us. Yeah, and exactly. found that they don't care when you call them. Now we know. Right. <laughs> All right, tonight, the big news here. The first time ever, Little Caesars Arena hosting its first ever playoff game. And the Pistons need a packed house. Larry Spruill joins us live from LCA. Hey, Larry. 
Good morning, guys. We are calling all Pistons fans, former new Pistons fans. It doesn't matter. We need you here in the house tonight to make history. Ah, y'all see me. Let's go. I'll talk about it coming up after the break. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. Coming up on 730 on a Saturday, let's take a look at downtown Detroit. Looks pretty good right now. We're off to a bit of a wet start. Could get wetter. Will we see the sun at all this Easter weekend? Andrew has the answer in just a moment. And today marks the 20th anniversary of one of the darkest days in our nation's history. Survivors of the Columbine shooting are sharing their stories this morning. Let's go out live to the top of LCA. Check this out. Number 19 is back home. Look at Ted Lindsay's jersey there as well. But we're bringing back Steve Eiserman back with the wings. Big news still on this Saturday. Local 4 News continues right now. Thanks for staying with us, Sean, and with Priya. Yeah, it's going to be a great weekend if you can manage to stay dry. And that's sort of the uh, game plan all weekend long, Andrew. That radar really showing a pretty active storm heading our way. That's right. It shows how challenging it will be later today, especially with wet road conditions. So factor on extra time getting to and from your destination. And grab the umbrella right now if you know you're going to need it, if you're going to be out uh, out all day long because chances are you will right now the rain is not very widespread across the area we're getting some light showers and sprinkles here in wayne county some rain that just now coming off of lake erie affecting monroe county but more of it to our east more of it to our southeast that will rotate through as we go through the day today especially as we get closer to 10 11 o'clock this morning through the middle part of the day and into the early afternoon that's when we'll see the most persistent widespread rain across the area that may be heavy at times. We're looking at 44 degrees by noon. Right now, it's only in the middle and upper 30s to around 40, so it remains chilly all day. Thankfully, though, above freezing, by the way. Sunrise occurred at 645. Highs today only around 48 degrees, well below average by a good 10, 15 degrees. And again, because of winds that are coming off the lakes, you got flood concerns along the lake shore. We'll talk more about Sunday because it does get sunnier. If you're just joining us, it gets milder for the holiday as well. More on that in your seven day forecast in minutes. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great weekend. We've got some construction to get you around for the weekend. So let's start over on M5. The westbound lanes close between Middle Belt to I-275. That closure will reopen on Monday morning at 5 a.m. So in the meantime, you can use Grand River or 8 Mile as an alternate route. Also, we've got construction on the westbound lanes of I-94. Between I-75 to Woodward, you'll see one lane block there. That will wrap up around 9 o'clock this evening. Eastbound lanes of I-696 between Mount and Gratiot, two lanes were blocked there last night at 9 p.m. This will remain that way until late May. We'll keep you updated on that. And then over in the Troy area, we've got construction for bridge work. The north and southbound lanes of Livernois right at I-75. That's closed. It will reopen Monday morning at 5 a.m. So to get around it, you can use Crooks or Rochester Road instead. Have a great weekend, everyone. Okay, Kim, thanks. 7.30 now happening today. Tonight is the first ever playoff game for any sport at LCA. That's awesome. The Pistons, you know, they've been struggling against the Bucks, and they really need fans to lift them up this evening. Larry Spruill joins us live from inside the LCA. And Larry, you can still get tickets to tonight's game. And did you find a ball? I did. Good morning, Sean and Priya. I've been practicing my layup and I'm tired. Free throws and all that good stuff. But we're going to talk about the fan experience here tonight for the big Pistons game. Joining me live right now is Kevin Gig. Kevin, thank you so much for us. So what can fans expect for tonight's big game? Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to be sold out. We have less than 250 tickets remaining wow. for tonight. So <laughs> the fan experience is going to be great. You know, much like opening night uh, for this game, we're going to have all new player intros and new music. And we want fans to download the Pistons app to Perfect. their phone because when you download your Pistons app and use it during the intros tonight, the light on your camera is gonna to pulse to the music. It'll be a great experience. We'll have lots of things going on in the concourse, Pistons power hours. We normally have lots of activations. Want fans to get down here early and enjoy all aspects of the game tonight. Now, speaking of tonight, tonight is history. The first playoff right. game here at LCA. Let's talk a little bit about that. What does that mean for the Pistons franchise? Well, it, it's huge for us. You know, we, we love that we're hosting the first playoff game ever here at Little Caesars Arena. We're going to put on a great show tonight. And it speaks a lot to our team and how it's growing under Coach Casey, uh, Blake Griffin, uh, who's day to day. So hopefully we'll see if he can go later on today. Andre Drummond, Luke Kennard, and all of our young guys. So they're ready to play tonight, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Almost sold out. You said less than 250? 
They it can is. Buy yeah, le less than 250 remain for tonight's game. Uh, for game four on Monday, that's the next opportunity for fans to come out and enjoy this playoff action. Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. Guys, no come on down and get the Pistons experience. Hey, sign me. Kevin, tell him to sign me. <laughs> Sorry, Priya, back to you guys. You are so, you're the luckiest guy yeah. in town right now. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And LCA all to yourself with a ball in the hoop. Yeah, that's right. Way to go, Larry. And 250 <laughs> tickets left. I feel like a lot of people are going to scoop those up. That's actually really good news. You want to pack the yeah. place and see if the Pistons can get back in this series. Kevin mentioned a lot of news there. See if Blake Griffin is going to play. Mm -hmm. And you get another chance to get back in the series on Monday night as well here in downtown Detroit. Well, there we go, Detroit basketball. All right, if you've ever doubted that Detroit was still hockey town, however, let's not forget about that. So we're still getting so much buzz surrounding Steve Eiserman's homecoming as the Red Wings general manager. What big news. Jamie Edmonds shows us how we got to this very exciting moment. What was weighing on me was I felt like it was getting harder to do the job the way it needs to be done and, and to also spend some spend the time I needed with, with Lisa and the girls. We saw in media reports he, he wanted to be back with his family in Detroit. Um, Ken and I, we get together on a regular basis and at our next meeting, you know, we certainly talked about that. <laughs> it's a real exciting day for me um, to see Steve Eiserman come back where he belongs. It's almost as if this was meant to be. Number 19 officially coming home on the 19th of April in 2019. Though Stevie Y says he didn't even realize that until his daughters told him this morning. The reason we're having the press conference today is because we got work to do. It really didn't have anything to do with the date or anything like that. But yeah, I guess to me it's, it's ironic and maybe hopefully it brings us some good luck. Eiserman says he wishes the Lightning all the best, but this is his team now, and he wants to bring the Red Wings back to a Stanley Cup contender. But he cautions fans this will be a process. We're very appreciative of your support. We're going to ask for your patience, and we're going to do things the right way. Right, tap the brakes a little bit here. Iserman asked fans to give the team some time to get back to where it's expected to be. He gave no timelines, of course, but he said he will do his best to bring them back. For all things Steve Iserman, just had to click on Detroit.com. Time now is 734 and security was on high alert in Detroit at the Green New Deal event after a Florida man was arrested for threatening Representative Rashida Tlaib. 49-year-old John Kless was arrested at his Florida home after leaving threatening messages. Police say the messages included obscenities and death threats for Tlaib, Representative Eric Solwell and Senator Cory Booker. Kless was arraigned in federal court on charges of making threatening communications. And this week, a threat against schools in Colorado brought a flood of memories rushing back of the day 20 years ago when a pair of students opened fire at Columbine. Two decades later, Columbine is a heavy word. Twelve students and one teacher lost their lives. For many survivors, the pain just will never go away. I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm over it because I will never be over it, but I don't want to focus on the dark side. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Several events are planned for today in Littleton, Colorado to mark the anniversary, including a religious service, a day of community service projects, and a memorial ceremony. This morning we are hearing from a rabbi here in Metro Detroit who was among the 41 people to get measles from an infected visitor. Now He only received one of two shots and is now urging everyone to get fully vaccinated. Communities must come together to ensure our safety. Now, the rabbi's message comes as Passover gathering started Friday and continued tonight. Officials are bracing for an uptick in cases as families travel and gather to commemorate Passover. And later this morning in downtown Detroit, Alpha Kappa Alpha is offering free mammogram screenings. And don't worry if you don't have insurance. If you haven't had a mammogram recently and you're at least 40 years old, you're welcome. The goal is to raise breast cancer awareness and to catch a potentially serious problem. If you're interested, look for the mobile breast cancer awareness coach outside the Kobo Center. Screening starts at 9 a.m. 736 on a Saturday time now for our scam and recall of the week. Here is consumer reporter Hank Winchester. Let's take a look at some of the consumer headlines making news this week. We're going to begin with the recall of the week. Check the 
kitchen cupboards because uh, Chewy Chips Ahoy cookies are being recalled because of an unexpected solidified ingredient inside. Check the packaging for the best when used by date of September 7th, 8th, 14th and the 15th. The scam of the week. This one is from the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, they are warning about a wave of Social Security scams and imposters. They are calling up people telling you that your Social Security number has been suspended because of suspicious activity. They may ask you for some personal information over the phone to verify. Just know this is a big scam targeting Metro Detroiters right now. The deal of the week. If you need some uh, last minute Easter shopping to do, Target is the place to go. They are holding big sales right now on kids clothing and shoes buy one get the other 50 percent off you can get all this information and also to take a look at the consumer headlines and all the info in our help me hank newsletter you heard it from hank you can sign up right at click on detroit.com and there you'll find all the big consumer headlines and stories that made news during the last week i'm consumer investigator hank winchester back to you good day to go shopping to get some of those uh, late easter sale items. Yeah, that's It's going right. to be rainy, and rainy day. You want to be indoors if you can. That's right. For today, exactly right, because we have rain that's already here, some more rain that's on the way for this afternoon. Right now it's coming in spritz and sprinkles, but more widespread rain is on the way. That's for Saturday as we look live at Ann Arbor. Sunshine, though, for Easter Sunday. More on that. Can we get some higher temperatures? Of course we can. More on that, too, in your weather forecast. Exchange Livonia. Rain, rain, go away. Come back in November. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> we just want spring, but instead we're getting winter like weather and a lot of rain while people are trying to celebrate. We do want those May flowers, though. Yeah, that's and right. That's right. It's a little give and take as we go through the weekend and certainly go through the season. And we're seeing those spring showers right now. We're looking at uh, shower activity. Not very widespread, though, but still it's out there, of course. Here are portions of Livingston County right around Brighton and Howell and farther to the north and west, like around Fowlerville. So be careful on some of those wet roads along 96 and especially down farther to the south. We've got uh, heavier showers here in areas of yellow just to the west of Monroe, headed for places like Dundee and then into Lenaway County. More of it is, is on the way, especially for later this morning and into the afternoon. Rain also plaguing parts of the East Coast from uh, Delaware into New Jersey, New York City. So this may be affecting flights. So make sure you check on those flights, whether it's with your app or also with uh, you know, just simply by calling your airline, making sure those flights are still on time, especially over at Metro. We're looking at 48 degrees for a high temperature today, so it remains much chillier than average. But we're staying above freezing across all of southeast Michigan for this morning. So it's more of a concern about wet conditions instead of frozen conditions. We're looking at that more widespread rain moving in closer to lunch hour and during the afternoon. So umbrellas required all day long to stay dry. 40 degrees right now. Visibility is looking good. Some folks still getting out there on the water. Diehard boaters, yes, I know you're out there. Waves anywhere from zero to one foot on the Detroit River, also on the lakes, big and small. Just make sure you have life jackets for everybody. Remember, more persistent rain arrives later in the morning and the afternoon. And it may affect today's baseball game. Keep it tuned right here to Local 4, and of course, click on Detroit.com if we get any updates on how rain might affect today's baseball game. White Sox still in town, taking on our Tigers just after 1 o'clock. But we will have showers around for tailgaters and for folks who will be at the stadium. Notice, chilly all day as well. Highs only around 48 degrees by the final out. Temperatures are in the 30s elsewhere. It's 38 for our friends over in uh, Howell, 39 in Mount Clemens, 39 also in Port Huron. So it's chilly all around and still pretty windy across the area, making it feel like it's below freezing. Here's what happens later today. You can see by 9 a.m., still the scene looks similar to way, the way it does right now. But that heavier, more widespread rain, you can see here in yellow, starts to arrive by lunchtime and it stays with us through about 4 p.m. Then it slowly dissipates overnight, starts to move away as high pressure takes over. That's when the sunshine comes back, just in time for the Easter holiday. We're looking at 65 on Easter Sunday. Sunrise, by the way, at around 643. As we go into Monday, even better. 71 for a high with a shower here and there, but then sunnier by the middle of next week with still mild conditions, highs in the 60s. Back to you.
All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now is 744 and dog owners in Shelby Township beware an unwelcome guest is roaming around the neighborhood. Just take a look. Just moments after letting her 10 month old puppy inside, Allison Gombos heard a loud thud at her door and she found a hungry coyote staring back at her nose pressed up against the glass, possibly looking for an early morning snack. There you go. There's the picture right there. Allison alerted neighbors in her dog friendly neighborhood to keep an eye on their furry pets. Wildlife officials have also been made aware of the coyote. Wow, what a picture. Now this has been a bit of an eyesore for more than a decade, but this morning we're learning of plans to breathe some new life into the Old Shores Theater over in St. Clair Shores. Jermont Terry joins us with the new development plans for this longtime favorite. The doors to the Shores Theater locked in 2006, but give us some time. People will soon walk back through these doors thanks to one hometown guy's vision. Royal Brian Ford used to say, yeah, get on the right track to Nine Mile and Mac. The old Shores Theater is now on track to come back. Yeah, a lot of memories here. After sitting idle for more than a decade, David Harden plans to revive oh, his childhood oh, memories and bring new ones for everyone in town. I've always been able to look at something and see a final product. While you may see a rundown movie theater with dusty seats and a busted screen, David envisions a vibrant future while embracing the past. I think. I think we can make this work. He projects I to spend around a half million dollars in renovations. The plans entails taking the two theaters and dividing one side as a restaurant and the other side as an entertainment venue. It'll be for live music acts, um, possibly comedy during the week. Sure, there's a lot of work to get done, but David's convinced this old spot will transform into the happening place it used to be and then some, and it will keep his hometown thriving. It's bringing back something that's been closed for 13 years, bring it back to life. And again, I grew up here. I see the vision. I know where we can go and what we can do with it. Now, David's hoping that the old signature marquee will remain the same, but that's still to be determined. But we do know it will take about 18 months to two years to get all of this work complete. And when it's all said and done, Nine Mountain and Mac will definitely look different. Reporting in St. Clair Shores, Jermont Terry, Local 4. That's going to be amazing. to see what it looks like. I know. All right. We know this. Eating healthy is hard and oftentimes very expensive. Yeah, but the key to a healthier diet is probably in your kitchen right now. Up next, why it's all about adding, not subtracting. We'll explain. This morning in Good Health, a dietitian says there are several simple ways you can make your food healthier. And all you have to do is actually add, not subtract. Mm. Haley Hernandez has the tips to a healthier lifestyle. Quick, easy, and on the go, prepackaged oatmeal is surprisingly not that nutritious. But dietitian Kristen Cabay from Advice for Eating says you can fix that. One of the easiest things that you can do is add a little bit of um, berries. Berries are probably like the best, um, highest fiber, highest antioxidants that you can get in the morning. She says you can add nuts, nut butter, even seeds to really pack a punch. Same thing with smoothies. It probably takes five to 10 minutes and you can really improve the nutrition. Add a little bit of protein powder, then we get in those nutrient boosters. All of those things are gonna help keep you full longer. The best part, she says, it doesn't matter if you use fresh or frozen fruits and veggies. At lunch is when you can add beans, rice, quinoa to any protein or salad. It might sound starchy, and Cabay says that's what you want. So it's low on the glycemic index, which means that it's going to have a minimal impact on your blood sugar. You need a little bit of those carbohydrates, and especially at lunch, they're going to keep you full and keep you energized throughout the day. At dinner, you can avoid the carbs and still eat noodles, veggie noodles, of course. Just a tiny bit of butternut squash in the evening, a cup or so of those noodles is really not going to throw you over in terms of your carbohydrates. And if you are trying to stick to more low carb, you can do the zucchini. That's going to be um, a lower on the starchy end. Okay, I like to load up on vegetables, but I don't know about the veggie noodles. I want to try them. I, I've never been able to cook them well. They're just, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a fan. <laughs> but also, maybe I should do this. Try adding some spices and herbs that are good for you, like, of course, garlic, turmeric, which are also anti-inflammatory. Okay. Yeah, turmeric is great. Things to Love give a try, to try. Okay. Speaking of some healthier lifestyles, this Metro Detroit woman Ooh. must know all the secrets. The incredible milestone that she is celebrating today. She looks great. 
Wow, I can't get I can't get over that picture. Well, I don't know what's happening and how I. old or young she is, so we'll be right back. To learn more. Road closures are underway on Livernoy in both directions under the I-75 freeway here in Troy. Crews will be demolishing a bridge in the area. In the meantime, drivers are urged to use Big Beaver Crooks or Maple as detours. Livernoy expected to be back open by 5 Monday morning. The captain we know is back, Steve Eiserman, officially turning home, returning home to the Detroit Red Wings to become the GM of our wings. Ken Holland, the now former GM, he's becoming the senior vice president of the team. The team making the huge announcement at a news conference Friday afternoon. And the Detroit Pistons are back in action tonight, playing at home in game three of the playoffs. This is the first time any playoff game is being held at Little Caesars Arena. Tip-off is at 8 p.m., and there are still just a few tickets available. Andrew, I think a lot of people are going to want to be indoors today. That's right, whether it's LCA or any place else. Because we have rainy, wet conditions uh, in the forecast for today, we have some rain around now. Notice the infield is covered. We have uh, some baseball here in downtown Detroit. Game is scheduled to start, to start at 1 p.m., but rain may affect that. Keep it tuned right here to Local 4 and click on Detroit.com if there are any changes. It continues to be rainy as we go through this morning, but especially late morning and into the afternoon with moderate to heavy rain setting up and being over the area for several minutes, even into a few hours. 48 will be the high today, so much chillier than average. But I have good news. Easter Sunday, it gets sunnier after 40 degrees overnight. We're looking at temperatures that will make it into the 60s on Sunday with sunnier skies. Warmer on Monday and Tuesday and mild next week with highs in the 60s, lows in the 40s. Tuesday through Friday, sunshine returning as well. We want to wish a very special happy birthday to Miss Emma Hamilton Anderson. She's turning 100 today. She All looks right. incredible. Look at her. Look happy at birthday, Miss Hamilton, Emma. 100. Oh, I wish I could have a pose like that. Yeah. That confidence. Looking good. Way to go. Hey, and thanks for All playing right. with our uh, trivia question about Steve Eiserman. Yeah. Uh, the first person that chimed in, the answer was 21 when he became Wings uh, captain. You win this beautiful gift basket. It looks so good. So many goodies in there. So congratulations. We've let you know. Thanks for participating. And uh, stay dry today. That's right. We got some rain in the forecast. Anatoly was our winner, by the way. Anatoly, way to go. Again, stay dry, stay warm. Royal Tea Room with the basket. Thanks so much.